Grace Resolved. Today we are growing a grace tree. Is there really any point to these New Year's resolutions when a lot of the time they just leave us feeling guilty? Hi, I'm Dr. K.P. McKee, founder and executive director of a spacious place, creativity, and spirituality center. And as we walk through today's practice, we would love to hear from you. If you have any questions or comments, some suggestions, you can enter those in your chat box, on your mobile device, or on your computer. So often New Year's resolutions have to do with self-improvement of some way or being more disciplined. And often if we do not meet that, we end up feeling guilty, which led me to wonder about Perhaps, especially right now when there's so much stress in our lives and so much that we are feeling uncomfortable about, thinking about perhaps making some resolution to get at the root of our more uncomfortable emotions. And I'm going to call them uncomfortable rather than negative because they can lead to real growth. So these would be emotions like guilt, shame, fear, despair, and anger. So just to keep things clear and simple for today, let's define these in this way. Let's understand guilt for today as a discomfort over an action or attitude that we have that we think is not worthy of us and our human potential. Shame, on the other hand, is the belief that at the core of us we are unworthy. Um, it comes to mind when someone's talking to us and Wanting us to feel ashamed, they say, aren't you ashamed, not don't you feel shame? But it feels very internal and very personal at the core of ourselves. Uh, fear. So that's a helplessness we, that we feel in the face of something that feels big and threatening. Despair is fear and discouragement multiplied to the point that we are rendered helpless and hopeless. And last, anger is often a secondary emotion. So it usually follows a, something that's primary, like um, a sense of fear or a sense of betrayal. So if we're feeling angry, the first thing we want to do is kind of delve down and find out what was the first uncomfortable emotion we were feeling. So with those things in mind, we can begin growing our grace tree. And I'm just going to move this in here. So you can see it, and I'm going to peel off some of these stickers so we can get at the first thing we're going to look at here today. This is the trunk of our grace tree, and we begin by identifying the emotion. Are we feeling guilty? Are we feeling ashamed? Are we feeling fearful? Are we despairing? Are we feeling angry? And if we're feeling anger, what is the root emotion that led to that anger? So after we have looked at that and discovered, gotten some clarity about what uncomfortable feeling we're feeling, we begin to echo down to the root and ask ourselves some questions for more clarity. So I'm going to get down here to some roots. So the first thing we can ask ourselves is when did the emotion start? When can I think back to when I began feeling this way? Because that will give us a clue as to what triggered that particular feeling. And then we can move from there to looking at into specifics about what was going on at the time and what led us to that emotion. And also if there's something that triggers us and takes us back into that feeling when we feel like we've moved on. And I think that journaling is a fantastic way to do this, to put yourself back at the time when this first began to happen and think through what did, what was I looking at? What was I hearing? Where was I in space? What was I feeling? 
um, what, what was anybody around at the time? And then and one of the things that often triggers things are potent things like smells or music. Uh, are there any things like that that take me back into this feeling of guilt? And if we begin to get a sense of that, then we can begin to understand where our discomforting feeling, whether it's guilt, shame, fear, despair, or anger, what was the root of that? And then the next thing that we can look at is um, we can say, we can give it the logic test. So sometimes when we're feeling our uncomfortable feeling, it is because we're in a situation where someone has told us we need to feel this way. And so we apply our logic because we need both our emotions and our reasoning brain as we are working through this to see if there's actually a legitimate reason for us to feel the way that we do. And if so, then are there alternative actions that we could have taken that would have led us to feeling better about ourselves? Or are there things that we can do now to make amends so that we can feel better? And the reason that we want to feel better is what we're going to talk about here in just a minute. So we need to do this dance of logic and emotion and not be overrun by either one. It needs to be a partnership. So after we've dug down and we've seen the roots and we get a better sense of where these uncomfortable emotions come from, then we can begin moving upward and branching out on our tree. And I'm going to start here first. And what would it be like if we chose to have grace on ourselves? Uh, if we understand that these are emotions that are a part of being human, that we have a better sense of what we're feeling, but then if we just say to ourselves, well, this is how I am feeling, how do I move forward in a positive hopeful direction from here and give myself some grace for my humanity. So if we begin to do that, what would its impact be on us as a person? How would things be different if we weren't taken down by these uncomfortable emotions? And then from there, let's think about another group of people who will be impacted. What is the impact on our loved ones? The reality is that if we are trapped in these uncomfortable emotions and unable to move through them, that they can both prevent us from developing relationships and they also can poison the relationships that we have. So it's not just a gift to ourselves. It's a gift to those people we care about or have the potential to care about in the future. And last. What is its impact on the larger world? The reality is that these uncomfortable, discomforting feelings can immobilize us, keeping us from do the, doing the good that we are capable of doing in the world. So they have a purpose, but we don't want to get stuck in them. And just to continue the metaphor just a little bit farther, we need healthy supportive soil in the way of a healthy, supportive community when we are feeling these discomforting feelings in order for us to grow our grace tree. And we also need the sunshine, which is an openness to joy. We all deserve to have moments of joy no matter what is going on around us. That is a strengthening thing and it helps us to keep on and see our, see our way through. And then last of all, we need rain, the refreshment of rain. And I just love the baptismal image of that, whether it's something that we think about when we are taking a shower or a bath, or whether we are baptizing ourselves with tears. Those things are all necessary for us to grow our grace tree. So if you have found this hopeful and helpful, we hope you will like it on Facebook. You can also re-watch this on Facebook, on YouTube, or on our website, www.aspaciousplace.com and we would love for you to share this with anyone you think might be helped by it. 
And we will be back on February 7th with another uh, Facebook Live, and we hope you will join us then. Let's close in prayer. Ground us, God, in solid, hardy soil. Strengthen our roots with clarity and hope, and give us warming sunshine and refreshing rain that we may grow sturdy and vigorous. Amen.